Now we'll discuss uh, with more details because you see why I'm spending extra time for this topic because uh, based on this icon only we have this chapter 5 classification of uh, the equation systems that says in understanding this is important. So here with the line diagram we'll try to understand all these components. You see this is a uh, in actual practice uh, you'll find a flash chamber, accumulator and uh, some other devices. At this level the four major components just to understand the concept. Okay. When we deal with the classification of the air conditioning machine, you will find more details. At this level, just focus on the concept. So the four major components, one is a compressor. Second, this heat heat exchanger is called condenser. And this heat exchanger is called evaporator. And here you'll find expansion device. It can be a throttling valve. It can be a capillary tube. You'll find the different uh, types of expansion uh, valve. Okay, so at this level, just focus on the concept. So the cycle start from compressor, right? And if you consider this high and low side, you see the compressor and condenser comes under high side and the expansion and evaporator comes at, comes under low side. Low side, high side means I'm talking about the pressure and temperature. Suppose if you draw, draw the line, so you see the left side is a high side and the right side is a, is a low side. Okay, so now with respect to the theory which I've given in the, in the notes, let me mark the points first. You see here, the points are given. But before this, quickly some, some more points I added. You see the vapor coming cycle is based on the principle that a refrigerant can change from a low pressure, low temperature vapor to a high pressure, high temperature vapor changing its state through compression and expansion. We'll discuss how exactly. And remember, it's a closed system. So what is the difference between closed and open system online? Closed I means a loop. Technically, with respect to thermodynamics, closed system means only the heat can transfer the system, not the mass. In case of open system, the mass and heat both can cross the boundary of the okay. system, but closed system, only the heat will transfer, the mass will not transfer the system. It means, you see, in this cycle, the refrigerant is running within the cycle now, it's not coming out from the system. Mm -hmm. Only the exchange of heat. So we can consider this as a closed system. And it's used as a refrigerant. And what is refrigerant? We already discussed. So now you see point one to two. Let me mark this point so that you'll get the clear idea. Point one to two leaving the evaporator. The refrigerant at the low pressure and low temperature and pressure, it uses again to achieve the refrigerant effect continuously. So point one to two. Here, it's related to, you see, one minute. Just let me mark this so that you'll not get the confusion. You see, condition at point 0.2. Condition at point 0.2 means we require a high pressure and high temperature. So let me mark this first. Avoid confusion. Or else, without marking also we can learn. But the theory to avoid confusion, which I've given in the theory, I'm going to mark. You see, I'm considering this point as 1. And this is as 2. And before expansion, I'm marking this as 0.3. After expansion, I'm considering this as 0 0.4. And then again, 4 to 1. You see, the cycle is 1 to 2, one process. 2 to 3 is a process. 3 to 4 also a process. And 4 to 1 also a process. Okay, so with respect to these points, we'll discuss. And it's very easy. You see, the cycle starts from the compressor. And remember, in compressor, you'll find the refrigerant in what state? Liquid or, uh, or gas? Yeah. Uh, so remember refrigerant in uh, in compressor refrigerant you will find in the gas state only because the compressors are designed to handle the refrigerant in the gas state first point and second point what do you think liquid and gas both are compressible or only gases are compressible this one, eh? Cons if you compare uh, you see if you compare liquid and gas comparatively gases are more compressible but it not mean that liquids are not compress compressible liquids are also compressible but very less compared with the gases so that's the reason in actual practice uh, just we are considering gases are compressible liquids are not compressible but liquid also slightly compressible but under high pressure so even liquid also compressible but practically we are considering the gases are compressible so in the inside the compressor the refrigerant should be in the gas state because we are considering gases are compressible and when you switch on the compressor, how, how we can switch on the compressor by supplying the electrical energy. No? For example, when you plug in the or when you supply the electrical energy to the compressor, the compressor starts. You may find the different types of compressor that we'll discuss later, like centrifugal, reciprocating, etc. That you'll find at the time of classification of machine. And at this level, you know what is that compressor? Compressor is used to compress the refrigerant gas state. 
So when the compressor the when the compressor compresses the refrigerant in gas state, what will happen to the volume of the refrigerant? Increases or decreases? The volume decreases. And what will happen to the pressure? Increases, right? And you know this, I think you're already aware of this. Pressure is directly proportional to temperature or inversely proportional to temperature. Pressure is directly proportional to directly proportional. And uh, you can relate with the, this concept of uh, temperature. We discussed now temperature is a function of uh, moment of molecules. As the moment of molecule increases, the pressure, uh, the temperature increases. And the moment of molecule related to the pressure. So it means as the pressure increases, the temperature also increases. So remember, pressure and temperature are directly proportional. So volume decreases because of compression and the pressure increases. And as the pressure increases, the temperature also increases. Actually, our requirement is to increase the pressure so that we can run the cycle but since directly this pressure is directly proportional temperature pressure the temperature also increases so how to reduce the temperature we'll discuss so you see the compressed refrigerant in the gas state with the high temperature and pressure you can see high pressure and high temperature in the vapor come out from the what compressor right so in order to reduce that uh, pressure or oh, sorry in order to reduce the temperature first of all you must change this this vapor to the liquid so what will happen the refrigerant which is with a high pressure and temperature we are supplying to a heat exchanger called condenser the name will give you the idea the condenser means condensation will happen in inside inside this and change of phase from vapor to liquid so when the refrigerant entering in the condenser in the in the form of vapor with a high pressure and temperature so you see it will it will flow inside this tube and it's a heat exchanger so what will happen in the heat exchanger the heat exchange from this refrigerant to outside and this exchange of heat can be done with the supply of air and for example i'm using a fan here and this fan when you run the fan it will suck the air from the outside and throw it throw it is going to throw on this and you see the outside temperature compared to the refrigerant temperature it should be less and it's a high temperature depression so assume that the um, the supply air what i'm throwing on that coil is a less temperature so you know heat transfer from high to low as per the second law of thermodynamics so what will happen this air is responsible to reject the heat off from this refrigerant which is in the gas form equal to what equal to latent heat because the vendor means the manufacturer will design this condenser this heat exchanger to reject the heat equal to the latent heat and whenever the latent heat it means when the rejection of latent heat what will happen to the phase gas to liquid yeah change of phase no? latent heat means change of phase so what will happen the inlet in the condenser is uh, in high pressure and temperature vapor and because of the heat rejection to the atmosphere by using the air so the outlet of this condenser will get again high pressure high temperature but in liquid you see you you know this change of change of phase means latent heat at what at constant temperature no? so temperature is still same but change of phase in the condenser so, one hmm. question is, is yes. this fan is this much of accurate that it can only you know uh, uh, lower the temperature or uh, not lower the temperature uh, rejection of heat re rejection of heat so that you see according uh, based on that only the manufacturer is going to design this the flow rate of air the number of coils the thickness of the coil die of coil then only the system will work so that is again the component designing so the manufacturer will design the condenser so that it can able to reject the heat equal to means not less than equal to the heat mm -hmm. the the slatted heat uh, then only the change of phase is possible right so that Tempera the, temperature will be remaining same uh, temperature and pressure both is going to be same but change of phase because you know at uh, means uh, latent heat means at constant temperature no? uh -huh. okay so when the refrigerant is coming out from the condenser it's with the same temperature pressure but it changed from what vapor to the liquid okay mm -hmm. and here one more important point if you use this fan to cool the condenser so remember this system and you can write as a note also if, uh, if you want you can please make a note this is a very important point so when you cool the condenser by using a fan so this system we can call as a air cool system and when you cool this condenser by using water for example i'm using a separate uh, container and this complete coil inside the container and I'm, I'm going to supply the water suppose here water in i mean h2o in and here suppose this h2o out means i'm using i'm circulating the water on the coil 
and the water is responsible to reject the heat of that condenser. So remember, this system will become water cool condenser. And why I'm explaining this point? Because at the time of learning chill water system, means I'm talking about chiller, chiller is of two types. One is a air cool chiller and second is a water cool chiller. And in air cool and water cool chiller, only the difference is at condensing site. Rest of the thing is same. So in chapter 5, we'll discuss in detail about the chiller. Don't worry. But I'm just relating because this is an important point. So at this level, just remember, if the condenser is cooled by air, we are calling that system. It can be a chill water system. It can be a different system. Uh, a lot of comes under DX. We'll discuss in chapter 5. So this system we can call as air system, air uh, this uh, air cool system. If I'm using the water to cool the condenser, that system we can call as a water cool system. Next. Uh, so now you see, outlet of the condenser, it is in. Uh, the refrigerant it is in the liquid but still with the same temperature now we are interested to reduce the temperature so now you see process three to four so now this refrigerant in the liquid form is allowed to pass through a device called expansion device or expansion valve it can be a throttling valve or it can be a capillary tube etc you'll find the different types in actual practice but at this level just focus on the concept so remember expansion with the expansion device what will happen expansion process will take place now Mm -hmm. An expansion is a reverse of what? Compression. Yes, exactly. So because of expansion inside this, excuse me, uh, because of expansion process of refrigerant in the liquid form, what will happen to the volume? The volume increases and pressure Decreases. decreases and pressure is directly proportional to temperature. So temperature also decreases. Okay. And you see, when the reference is coming out with the low pressure after this expansion process, the pressure is so low, some amount of refrigerant flashes and change to vapor, some amount, by extracting the heat from the remaining liquid refrigerant. And we know that as the pressure decreases, the boiling point of the substance also decreases. No? So at the outlet of the expansion device, some amount of water, some amount of refrigerant will flash and extract the heat from the remaining liquid refrigerant. Further, it's cooling down, means extracting the heat. And this cool, you see at the low and low temperature and pressure refrigerant, when the coming out from this expansion device, the inlet of the outlet of the expansion device is connected to the inlet of one more heat exchanger called evaporator. This is the application site. Okay. So this evaporator, if I use to extract the heat from the food product, this system I can call as a refrigerator. If I use this evaporator to extract the heat from the room air, this I can call as a air conditioner. Or if I use the same to extract the heat from the water, I can call this, this as a water cooler. I'm not talking about air cooler, that is different. Water cooler, you know, in you will find the water cooler also no? only to cool the water. You'll get the chill water from that for drinking purpose. So you see application we have different application, but the concept is same. So this heat exchanger is called evaporator. So remember when the low pressure and temperature refrigerant entering in the evaporator, so what will happen? Because of low pressure, the boiling point, the boiling point of that refrigerant also reduces the, it means it can start boiling at the low pressure when, when extracting the heat. So what we'll do, we'll use a fan. For example, I'm taking example of air conditioner i'm using a fan and this fan is used to suck the air from the room and suppose room temperature say 30 degrees centigrade and this refrigerant temperature say 5 degrees centigrade for example or it can consider say 15 degree it's depend as per the capacity and other factors just for example so you see 15 degrees temperature is less than 30 now so when the 30 degree air is going to throw on this coil and remember the air is not going to mix with the refrigerant both there is no mass transfer now so this this is the copper tubes and copper is a good exchanger of uh, uh, this is a good conductor so what will happen you will get the cool this temperature of that surface of that copper tubes will drop means you'll get the cool uh, copper tubes when when the air is through on that coil okay on that uh, cooling coil what will happen the air heat will extract by the refrigerant Right? Because again, second law of thermodynamics, heat transfer from high temperature to low temperature. So the refrigerant will extract the heat and the refrigerant at, at low pressure means at low boiling point. So it start boiling and, and start boiling means it will extract more and more heat. And when the refrigerant is coming out from this evaporator, it will change its phase from liquid to vapor by extracting the heat equal to latent heat again the manufacturer will design this evaporator to extract the heat equal to latent heat then only the change of phase from liquid to vapor means gas 
and now at the outlet of this evaporator the refrigerant in the refrigerant condition is what low pressure low temperature but vapor in vapor again that low pressure and low temperature vapor in order to run, in order to circulate again we required a system na again the compressor so the low pressure and temperature vapor means gas will suck by the compressor and again the compressor will increase the pressure and temperature the cycle continues okay so in this way we'll get the cooling effect and this cooling effect you can utilize for different application based on different application we are dealing with the different we are we are calling the different system again further if you talk about air conditioning in that also you'll find the different system like a de system or a chill water system or or air air system etc we'll discuss in chapter 5 and in actual practice uh, you'll find here one accumulator because this accumulator will not allow any refrigerant liquid in compressor it will bypass back to the circuit similarly you'll find the flash chamber also here if any gas is in that it will supply back supply back to this so in actual practice you'll find additional components also apart from this you'll find the receiver because uh, the refrigerant after expansion it is collected in the receiver and as per the requirement uh, it will uh, supply to the evaporator based on the demand so you'll find n number of components in actual practice at this level just focus on the concept how we are getting the cooling effect that's it yeah so now sir, if you have any question we can discuss sir if, if i'm summarizing the thing mm -hmm. uh, after after expansion valve uh, mm -hmm. till the uh, section of compressor uh, pressure and temperature will be same right yeah but you see outlet of this expansion it is uh, outlet. In, in liquid outlet the, of, only the phase change uh, will be occur yes, in the yes. evaporative coil and the same case on the high side also uh, temperature and pressure will be same but phase change will occur in the condensing coil yes so and just go. Accu mm -hmm. accumulator accumulator is means uh, mm -hmm. sorry receiver is the you know after the condenser the after eva after evaporator sorry oh my mistake after condenser hmm. after condenser you'll find the this uh, this accumulator sorry my mistake this uh, receiver receiver accumulator this off evaporator and uh, flash chamber after this uh, condenser the flash chamber will not allow any gas in the expansion accumulator will not allow any liquid, liquid. in the compressor because it's vapor compressor i think compressor yes. is damaged. yes because yes definitely because compressor is designed to compress compressor the refrigerant in gas state okay like this you'll find some more options like controls etc in the in actual cycle that will uh, i'll show you in the chapter 5 at the time of dealing with the window split or other systems okay but the important point is if the condenser is cooled by air it's a air cooled system if the condenser is cooled by water it's a water cooled system please make a note of this point we'll use at the time of chill water system also apart from this uh, how the phase change and how this cycle uh, a different uh, process like uh, compression condensation and expansion and evaporate hmm. this four process and i've given the point also one to two three to four and e4 to 1 the same with reference to that you'll find the theory in the notes so this uh, conclude the vapor compression cycle and uh, chapter 3 in the next session we'll start chapter 4 that is uh, psychometry very very important psychometry means the the property of air air means the moisture and without learning the psychometry you cannot think for this designing or, or, or you cannot think for this load calculation means conditioning of air because with the psychometry you'll find the properties of air okay then online done for tonight okay, thank you <laughs>